Welcome to Data Demystified. I'm Jeff Gallick, and this is my series of tutorial videos on how to use SPSS to work with data. In this video, I'm going to show you how to conduct, interpret, and plot the results of a single variable logistic regression. As always, we'll be using the YouTube Viewing Habits survey that I created, and you can find both a link to the data file and a video tutorial of the data below. Logistic regression is a tool that allows us to include categorical, specifically binary variables, as outcome variables in a regression. This is not something we can do in basic OLS regression, and that is a topic I cover in great detail in a series of other videos that I'll link to below. But in this video, we're going to keep it simple, and we're going to do a single variable logistic regression where we predict a single binary variable with a single continuous predictor variable. Beyond that, I'm going to show you how to interpret the results of that regression, as well as how to plot those results to make them a little bit more intuitive. The two variables we're going to work with are actually down here at the bottom of my data set. In a different video, I created a categorical dummy variable called poll ID underscore one, which basically just represents whether someone is categorized as a Republican in this data set or not. And I'm going to try and predict that variable using another continuous variable called religious, which is how religious someone says that they are, with one being the least religious and five being the most religious. So again, we're going to predict whether someone is a Republican, that's coded as zero, not a Republican, one is a Republican, as a function of how religious they are. And to conduct a logistic regression, we go up to Analyze, Regression, Binary Logistic. Now, it's worth noting that not every license of SPSS includes the binary logistic option, so if you don't see that, your license might not include it, and you might need to upgrade, but that is up to you to decide. Anyway, we click on Binary Logistic, and this dialog appears, which actually looks quite similar to our regression dialog, but it performs logistic regression. So if we scroll to the bottom here, we're going to take political ID Republican, that's our dependent variable, and we're going to include it in here in this dependent box. And remember, we're going to predict this as a function of how religious someone is, so we take religious and we put it into this covariates box right here. The only option that I'm going to change is under save, I'm going to save the predicted probabilities, and that's going to be very useful for us in a moment when we plot the results of this regression. Now I hit continue, and I hit OK. And we get quite a few things, but the most relevant thing for us is all the way at the bottom here in this table called variables in equation. Now, SPSS puts the constant, that's our beta zero that we see in other forms of regression at the bottom rather than the top. So just be careful about that when you read this table. But the key things to note here are our beta coefficients, which are actually in this case, our log odds, our statistical significance levels, which are right here, and our odds ratios, which are denoted right here with exponentiation of B. Now, Unlike basic regression, the interpretation of these coefficients is a lot less intuitive. The things that are worth pointing out, though, is that the sign of our coefficient matters quite a bit. So this coefficient for religious is, in fact, statistically significant. We see that because our p-value is well below 0.05. And the sign, meaning whether it's positive or negative, tells us the direction of our effect. So in this case, this is a positive coefficient. And what it says is that as someone becomes more religious, they are more likely to be categorized as someone who is Republican. It doesn't really tell us exactly what that probability is. In fact, nowhere on here do we see probabilities, which are actually usually what we're looking for. I want to know, for instance, if somebody says a four on my scale of religiosity, how likely they are to be categorized as a Republican. Because for a new person, I might say, well, if they also indicate four, they are thus likely to be a Republican or not. And so for that, I need the probabilities. Now, what's useful is that when I said save probabilities, if I flip back to my data view, there's a new row of data, which is right here. This is the predicted probabilities. If I click over to data view, I see that it identified the predicted probability given any level of our input, in this case, religiosity. And what I can do to help with the intuition of the relationship between these two variables is plot that relationship. And so I'm going to show you the simplest way I know how to do that. And we go up to graph, chart builder, and we're going to define what our chart is going to be. In particular, in this case, I'm going to use a line graph. So I click on line right here, and I just need a single line. So I'm going to take this box right here and drag it into my workspace. And we have an x-axis to define and a y-axis to define. Our x-axis is just going to be religiosity. It's the measure that we care about. That's right here. And our y-axis is actually going to be the predicted scores. So if we go all the way to the bottom here, here's our predicted probabilities. This will now plot the relationship between the full range of observed data in religiosity and the predicted probabilities from our model. So if I click OK, this is my relationship. A few things to point out. The y-axis is my probabilities. And so it says that if you are someone who says you are not very religious, you're a one, 
the likelihood that you're a Republican is a little bit more than 10%. On the other hand, if you are someone who is very religious, they respond five on this scale, the likelihood that you're a Republican is much higher, nearly 50%. The other thing to point out is that this is a curvilinear relationship. It doesn't have a particularly strong curvilinear nature, but it is not in fact a straight line, and that is because when we're dealing with logistic regression, we almost always find nonlinear relationships. So that's really all there is to it. If I scroll back up here, we see that the relationship between religiosity and whether someone is a Republican is defined here in this table, and we can visually represent that right here. But if you're curious where those probabilities are coming from, what we're actually doing is taking each of these values, one, two, three, four, five, plugging it into this equation here, which is just beta zero, which is negative 2.604, plus beta 1.513 times that value, so let's say one, that gives us our log odds. We then take those log odds, we convert them to odds by exponentiating, that's actually defined right here, and then to get probabilities, we use this formula here. We just take the odds and divide them by one plus the odds. That's the probability that someone is categorized as a Republican in this case, given any level of our religiousness down here. That's how this chart is actually built. If you wanted to do that manually, you could just follow those steps I outlined. In future videos, I'll talk about categorical variables in logistic regression, as well as interactions in logistic regression, so keep an eye out for those. That's it for this video. I hope you found this useful, and if you have any questions, please comment below, and I'll be sure to reply as quickly as I can. Aside from these tutorials, I'm on a mission to equip everyone with the information they need to thrive in our data-rich world. If you'd like to learn not just the mechanics of analysis, which these video tutorials focus on, but also learn the intuition behind the analysis you're performing, I strongly suggest you check out the other intuition-focused videos on this channel where I take the jargon out of statistics and data science and help you build a deep, intuitive understanding behind all the analysis that you're performing. I'll put a link below to a playlist of the videos that focus on just this. Finally, please take a moment to like the video, subscribe to this channel, and click that little bell icon so that you don't miss out on any new content that I put out. Thanks for watching.